into this because this will be the first time I do something like this so I kind of want to do it I just want to see how it goes more than anything um, all right so the first patch note is when activating the ultimate status communication symmetry now reports the number of charges left on our teleporter this is pretty good for people who don't use their mics it also like kind of frees up comms a little bit um this isn't really a huge change it's just a buff to symmetra and it's a buff to players that don't use them when activating the needs healing communication while targeting a teammate anna lucio mercy and Zenyatta will now tell allies to group up to receive healing um i feel like this is a little deceptive this is like an anna telling or a mercy telling her teammates to group up to heal just seems kind of silly like it would probably be better to just have like a need help function but i guess this is fine i mean it doesn't change anything Sit and laugh emotes, it's cool, whatever. Skill rating is now measured on 1 to 5,000 scale instead of 1 to 100. So, I didn't like the 1 through 100 ranking system. I thought it was kind of silly. And I guess the reason why is because the gap between like an 80 and a 79, depending on like how you found them, or depending on who it was, it wasn't always accurate. Like you could boost people to 80 pretty easily, and I guess that that has more to do with the That'll like have to do with the decay and the minimums and like the deltas, but the old system was really bad, so trying a new system is not going to matter. Um, it's just beneficial because it's trying something new because the first one didn't work. So no matter what the new system is, I feel like it can't possibly be worse than the old one. So that's my take on this. Uh, I do like that they're putting us into tiers though because it makes it more easy to tell in the scoreboard and like the join match screen like who is where um the ranges aren't actually that big like 1 to 1500 is the equivalent of rank 0 to one and a half why am i doing them not with this map 30 this is 1 to 30 this is 30 to 1540 to 50 to 60 and then to 70 and then grandmasters 80 plus so, in bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond tiers, a player will not drop out of their tier even if their skill rating falls below the cutoff. This won't matter to anybody that's like at the top of the matchmaking. Um, this patch note, because all that this means is that if you get to diamond, it won't ever pull you out of diamond. But if you drop out of master, it'll pull you down. And if you drop out of grandmaster, it'll pull you down. So. This patch, they did the top 500 thing, where they were like, okay, you're in top 500. If you ever drop out of top 500, you're going to lose your rank. Um, or you're gonna keep your top 500 status for the avatar stuff, but it won't show up. You'll lose it on the in-game thing. So it doesn't make sense to me that they're gonna keep that same system for this, because if you go to Grandmaster and then you lose, you'll go back to Master. But you'll probably still get the Grandmaster Avatar if like, there is a Grandmaster Avatar. I don't know if there's a Grandmaster Avatar. But like if there are rewards for your rank, it'll probably still go off your max. So I'm not sure if that's still the case. Players in Diamond Master and Grandmaster tiers that haven't participated in a competitive match for seven days will lose skill rating. This is good because it stops people from like getting to top 500 or getting to Grandmaster and just going AFK for the month and saying like, all right guys, I ended in Grandmaster, I'm a Grandmaster player. Like, People did that in this patch, and I think that this is just trying to make it not happen again. And it's pretty good, I guess. Players with a skill rating above 3,000 will lose 50 rating points every 24 hours after that week. Um, that's okay, I guess. 3,000 is the equivalent of 60. So if you go all the way down to 60 because you were AFK, that's a lot. Like, you could potentially go from 80 to 60 just because you went on vacation for a month. That kind of sucks, but I think they want to keep integrity in the ranking system and they want players to like have to compete constantly to like stay there which is cool competing in a single match will halt with decay players that haven't participated in a week will in a week will automatically drop out of the top 500 that's actually a big thing and i don't think i read this before if you don't play for a week you're just out of top 500 even if you're like the top player um in the top 500 i guess you get it back when you play that next match but they don't want the top 500 being polluted with a lot of AFK accounts. But that seems kind of harsh, but whatever, you can get it back. 
Several refinements have been made to the time bank system. I think that this just means that the time, the initial time and the time on the map is different. Like instead of having nine minutes to cap Volskaya, maybe now you have like eight. I don't know what the numbers are, but I'm sure that they just ruined, they lowered them to make the matches not last 10 years like they were. Time back system has been added to Dorado, Hollywood, King's Road, Numbani, 66, and Watchpoint, Gibraltar. Some people don't like Time Bank. I guess the way you have to look at Time Bank now is that it's literally just coin flip, but you have more to coin flip, if that makes sense. Like, you have stopwatch now because the time matters, because you, you want more time for your second run if you go to a second run. But it also means that... Ties are very hard to accomplish now unless a team unless like both teams hold on defense because the cart distance should always be the tiebreaker. On Gibraltar be the tiebreaker. I, I think every map has the first point as a CP or a payload. So any all payload maps should never end in a tie. And a CP map will only end in a tie if teams get held on the first point on defense in like the second round or in any round, I guess. So it's very, very hard to tie now. The ties like really shouldn't happen. Uh, time granted for taking objective on Dorado, Hanamura, Hollywood, Kings Road, Numbani reduced from five to four minutes. This is good. It'll decrease map time. One of the biggest complaints I think when the game came out was that you could spend ten minutes capping through Gibraltar or like through Anubis. Like if you cap the first point in five seconds, you had to spend nine minutes pushing the next point if your team was bad because it was very easy to get a snowball. So now it's a little bit. Or you, it was very easy to win the first fight and then lose the, all of the consecutive points. It was just because of the nature of the game. And this kind of removes, or it makes it a little bit less punishing, I guess. It also just makes teams a little bit more, you have to be smarter, I think, to win now because the time is reduced. You don't have a lot of time to play with. It's not like, oh, I can mess up three pushes anymore. It's like, I can probably only mess up two. Existing competitive points saved from season one, we multiply by 10. That's not really a big deal. They just, I think that they're going to change the way the economy works. Like This seems like they're going to set up for some new system. Um, it might also be because they had to add ties that they went into the system, but there's two ways to look at it. There's like, ties only give you three points now, so it's like it would be like the equivalent of like 0.3 right now. So that's what this is for. Um, but I would say that there's probably a good chance that they're going to start adding skins that are like competitive only skins and stuff like that. Or like you'll have other uses for the competitive points, but I mean, don't quote me, I'm just assuming. Um, players with more than 6,000 points of the start of season 2 and no longer accrue points by playing competitive matches. I guess they don't want you just building up a bank of competitive points. Like they want you to have to spend them because they want the next rewards that they put into the game to not just be like instantly bought up by people. So it's kind of smart in that regard. It's pretty much just saying like we're making a currency and we don't want you to hoard it because if you hoard it, then you're gonna be able to just like ruin future events for yourself and other players. Like, oh, that guy has all the golden skins for X hero. Must have had a lot of money. Players must now win at least 50 competitive matches to be eligible for a spot in the top 500. So this is just a nerf to alts. You're gonna have to play 50. You're not even gonna wanna use your alts anymore unless you're just playing with friends. Um, as far as getting top 500 with your alt, it won't be worth it because you're going to have to play on your main account and your alt account. And playing 50 matches is actually very um, time consuming. So this is actually a pretty big um, nerf. To, they just don't want alt accounts in the top 500. They want like a true top 500. I mean, people will still get alts in the top 500, but it'll be a lot harder to maintain because you have to play on two accounts once a week. Um, not that that's hard for some people, but it's just something to think about. Players must now complete more matches to clear their penalty status for leaving a match early. Um, that's okay, that's just don't leave early. I think, I think you lose XP and you like get reduced SR boost or gain, so this is just more punishment for leaving, and I think leaving is one of the biggest problems in the lower rankings. I always see Reddit posts about how people leave like 5 out of 10 games or something, but um... I'm not sure that that like that doesn't happen at the top because if people leave at the top, like they get really punished, and you don't want to lose your ranking at the top. So it's better for you to like, even if it's a shit match, to just let it draw out. And yeah, there's gonna this will get rid of cheaters, I guess too, because if you're gonna cheat at the end, if they ban you in the middle of the season, it's gonna take you a long ass time to get back. 
players have drastically different skill ratings. Uh, they say drastically, but this isn't really that drastic. This is only the equivalent of 10 in the current system. So like a 70 can't play with an 80 or a 60 can't play with a 70. Like that's the cutoff. A 59 can't play with a 70 and a 61 can't play with like a 72. I think that that's okay. It might be a little tight, I'm not sure. I don't know if people, I mean, people had a problem with 80s grouping with 50s, but 80s grouping with 60s and 70s was never really that big of a deal. Um, Because you were going to get 80s and 70s, you were only, you were probably going to get 70s and 60s on your team anyway. So unless they change the matchmaking algorithm to, to match this, I think it could be a problem and they'll probably, I would think that they would up this gap to like 750 or something. Because I don't think a 65 playing with an 80 is that big of a deal. Especially when the matchmaker will give you like a 67 every now and then, even when you solo queue. So unless this changes, the, unless the matchmaker is also changing, I think that this will have to change. But we'll see. I don't, I don't have a problem with this. I think that this is good for the integrity of the top 500. Um, so better players will get to the top and they won't have to worry about like digging through sludge. But yeah, I, I do agree that the players above 80, like having having this if you're above 80 is hard because like some players are just outliers, you know? Like you'll be an 85 or something, like say you're sure for, or like me or anyone that's above 80. If you're trying to play with someone that's like 70, you can't because you'll be like 82 and they'll be 70. But in reality, the way it was right now, 70 is pretty good. But I think it'll, I think the integrity of the system will just get better because you'll have to, um, what's the word? You'll have to play with players around your skill level to climb. You won't be able to just boost. And removing the ability to boost is a big deal because it just makes it, it just ups the integrity. And I think that's all that they want to do. And I'm completely okay with that. I think that this number is going to change or it'll have some like exceptions. But the, the concept of limiting the number, like the lowest number that you can queue with is pretty cool. Ultimates that consume the ultimate meter when activated will now drain the meter more quickly. Quarter second instead of one second. This is a very big nerf to alt refunds. I think alt refunds are one of like the worst concepts in the game. I think I've thought that they were one of the worst concepts in the game. Um, so what this means is that if you're a Genji and you pop your Dragon Blade and a McCree insta flashbangs you, or like before when a McCree, when a Genji would Dragon Blade and like he'd finish the animation, his ult would tick down um, over a second. So if you flashed him within like 0.5 seconds, he'd still get 50% ult. Now, you can st if you flash him immediately, like as soon as he starts making his like call or whatever, he'll still get it back. So it's actually better for you to wait half a second or a second after Genji ults to throw your flashbang if you have a free flashbang. You can still get refunded, but it's a lot harder and it has to be like split second for you to get the refund off. So you don't want to cancel. Gen I would say if you hear a Genji ulting, don't flashbang him while he's still doing the animation. And the same goes for like high noons and stuff or reapers. Like if you see a reaper going for a spin, like let him spin like half a spin or something before you flashbang him. Um, you don't want to flashbang immediately because you'll... The difference is that if you do it immediately, he'll get it back. If you wait half a second, he won't have it. So this is just, uh, it kind of like makes you have to play a little bit. It just changes the way you have to play, but pretty much you can do it faster than you used to be able to, but you don't want to do it immediately. It's bad to do it immediately. Um, reverted a recent change to reduce size of heroes projectiles. Altering the size of projectiles in flight had too many unintended side effects to keep in the game, at least in its current form. I don't know what this means. I wish that they would explain what this means. Because I don't think that there was, I, I didn't feel any problems with projectiles in the last patch. This just makes it easier for skill shots, and I don't really like that. Um, I don't know if this applies to Anna's sleep dart, but May's right click is ginormous again, and so are Hanzo arrows. So this just makes it easier to aim on, I think, weapons that should be hard to aim. Um, but whatever. I mean, I, I can complain about this, but there's it's not that big of a deal, I guess. It's annoying. Like, it's definitely annoying, and you'll definitely die to dumb things. Like, I think that there was a video of Hanzo's, like, shooting corners and, like, getting kills of people behind walls they couldn't see. Like, that'll probably happen again. But that's kind of Hanzo's entire, like, premise of a hero. I think that this makes a big deal for heroes like Mei, though, 
where she's not supposed to be that good at long range, but this makes her just a little bit better. Um, whatever. Hansa will now experience a 30% decrease in speed while aiming, formerly 40%. So this is a 25% increase in movement speed while you're drawing your bow. This might not seem like a big deal on paper, but like trust me, this is a lot of speed. Um, this is a very big buff. I think like anything that buffs movement speed is generally a big deal. Like you can talk about how damage impacts things and stuff, but this just makes him dodging while he's shooting easier. It makes him harder to hit, and it gives him better ability to like corner peek because you can like peek and come back quicker. Um, that's pretty much it though. Maximum projectile speed has been increased. People are like spamming Hanzo right now, like, oh my god, Hanzo's in the meta, blah, 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 blah. This is a big change, but it's not, it wouldn't be so big of a change if they didn't do this change with the projectile size. Like, the fact that it's faster is cool. Like, I don't know if that's really a problem. You still have to aim, right, in theory. But the change to the size makes it so that this thing is like faster and it's bigger. So like, people used to make the joke that like you're shooting tree trunks. Like now you're literally shooting rocket ships because they're like bigger and they're faster. Hanzo has the potential to deal a lot of damage, but you can feel really inconsistent even at medium distance. By increasing the projectile speed, we're extending his reliable range, making it easier to land shots without having to predict enemy movement perfectly. That, I mean, it's, it's stuff like this that like you shouldn't even put in the patch notes because it'll just make people mad. Like he, they're pretty much saying like we felt that it was too hard to aim with Hanzo, so we just made it easier. Um, I guess that that's good. I mean, I agree. Hanzo was inconsistent, so maybe this isn't even the worst patch note. But I feel like saying like oh we're just making it easier for the sake of making it easier is a little bit dumb. Just say like Hanzo wasn't putting out as much damage as he could and blah 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 blah. blah. Um. But yeah, whatever. Hanzo's Hanzo now. He's still good. He's definitely better than he was. I don't know that he's like insta pick. Hanzo's a reliability. You run a Hanzo, and if it doesn't work out, it's just really bad. Like a hero like Zarya can still poop on him. Um, a hero like McCree's still good. Anna's probably still good against him. Widowmaker's still good against him. I mean, he can definitely fight back better against other snipers now. But he has trouble with shields. This doesn't change his damage against shields. It's the same as it was before. So Reinhardt still kind of takes him out of the fight. And his ult's not that good if teams are running Zenyatas, and teams will probably still be running Zenyatas. So if you're gonna trade him out, he has to be doing out as much damage as a Reaper or a McCree, and I think that that's a little bit of a, like a tall order for him. Um, He's, more, he's definitely niche. I don't know that you'll pick him, though. The wall hacks are definitely good. Sky Arrow is definitely still good. It's just... Does this make him better than McCree? No. Does it make him better than Reaper? Depending on the situation, maybe. And does it make him better than Roadhog or May or Zarya? Probably not. So while he's better, he's not great. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Blizzard on May. Blizzard projectile now pierces barriers. Radius has been increased. This is a huge change. This is like a 60% increase in size, I'm pretty sure. Like if the radius was eight, it's like eight times or pi r squared, which is like three times 64. So that was like 128, um, 192 square feet or whatever, roughly. And then now it's, it's 300, so it went from 192 to 300 in terms of area, meters squared or whatever. So from, yeah, like 200 to 300. So that's like, it's almost a 50% chance or 50% increase in size in the overall blizzard, which is like huge. So this looks small on paper, but this is a massive increase to the range or just the amount of area that you can cover. You don't want to throw this at walls anymore or ever. You would probably be better off throwing this like directly on the middle of a point now or somewhere that it'll just be big you know like you don't want to throw it at a wall because if you throw it at a wall you're just decreasing the area because you'll only get the shit that's in front of the wall when you want the entire circle um the going through barriers is cool but i don't know if it's that big of a deal there weren't many times where i feel like a reinhardt blocked a may a good mail 
I mean, there were definitely times where it happened, but I wouldn't say that this is that big of a deal. I think the best use for May, one of the best ways to use May ult is just to drop a wall, like a May wall, and then drop the ult and throw the ult at the wall so you can like stop it precisely wherever you want it to land, and it'll always hit. Um, and then you drop the wall, and then anything that was waiting behind the wall will just start getting frozen because it won't see the projectile coming. That's a good way to do it. Um, but I don't see a big change on this, but I do think that the radius going up is big. And she's already been buffed because they buffed the projectile size. So she's hitting headshots more effectively now, or more consistently, and the radius of, or the area of her blizzard is up 50%. So this is like, she got buffed pretty heavily. She's been good, she's just hard to play, and it's hard to find comps to fit her in. She has this issue where she's really good at delaying maps, but she's not really good at finishing them. So like you don't really want to push with a Mei, but if you really want to stall out a cart, she's probably one of the best heroes to stall out a cart or a cap point. Um, as far as like how this affects competitive and like pubs, I think pubs will have a huge, this is a huge buff to pub Mei because 2CP, she's already really good. There's not many maps where she's not good on 2CP. Like she's good on Anubis, she's good on Volskaya, she's good on Hanamura. She's just good on the last point of maps. Even King's Row, she's not bad. It's just she doesn't put out that much damage. Um, but yeah, she's she's definitely buffed and she'll definitely get picked more as a result. Dead Eye now drains over a 0.25 second period instead of um, the 50% give back. This is just a big nerf. I mean, it's not a big nerf, it's just a nerf, but it's a well, it's a big needed nerf, you know? Like, nobody's complaining about this because they knew how dumb it was that McCree got half of his ult back for popping a bad high noon. You have to be smart with your high noons now. You can't use it to zone as efficiently because you used to be able to just like, oh, I'm gonna pop high noon to slow them down and you didn't even care if you didn't get kills because you get it again. Now that's gone, you wanna use your dead eyes well now like you probably want to get a kill or two probably at least a kill if you're gonna pop it and you can interrupt it faster like the same way it works with genji if you interrupt it after like half a second it'll just be gone so yeah this is just a nerf to mccree it's not a huge nerf because mccree's strong even without his ult but his ult's just icing on the cake uh the mercy changes are pretty big though caduceus staff healing beam healing per second has been increased by 20 percent 20%'s a lot. So like if it was, I don't know what it was before, I'm gonna say it was like 60 or 70, it's now 80 or 90. Um, or if it was 100 before, now it's 120. Like that's a lot of HP per second. You can still out damage this, I think. I know you can with a Zarya Beam above like 50% charge. Um, Reaper will still go through. Mercy's biggest problem is that she can't heal through burst damage that well. And I think that this kind of makes it a little bit more consistent or it gives her a little bit more of a fighting chance against heroes like Reaper and McCree. Like, you, if you're healing someone that gets flashbang, then they get right click, they might live, or they'll have a better chance of living now. Um, same with someone that like, gets hooked. If they have, like, full HP because you healed them while they were getting hooked, it might be good. So, this is just a buff to her single target healing. It's not that big of a deal. It's just... It makes her more appealing because single target damage output is a big deal now, especially when they nerfed the Zenyatta um, Discord, because her damage boost is still good. The issue that Mercy has is that her ult isn't reliable. You can't like use it well. I think Mercy's going to get picked on offense a lot, but not on defense. But I have this weird feeling that you won't... I feel like Anna is still better than Mercy, but it's completely dependent on the comp that you're running. So like here, they have Resurrect. Resurrected allies will be able to maneuver after 2.25 seconds. So they increase their healing per second, which means that her ult will build faster, but they resurrect it, like the Resurrect is faster too. So because you're getting your ult more, you'll be able to res more, and the reses will be quicker in, than they are right now, at least in this current patch. But 2.25 seconds is very fast. Like, you don't realize how fast this is, but... um. This is almost a 30% reduction in speed of how long it takes for you to respawn. So like it's kind of a buff and a nerf at the same time because it used to be kind of hard to like time a sticky bomb or a junk red tire or a male. I think now you, if someone dies and they're getting res, you just drop the sticky bomb at their feet and it'll kill them. Um, 
But yeah, Mercy is definitely going to be back. Whenever Mercy comes back, Farah comes back. That's just kind of the way it works. I think Mercy Diva will be strong. Mercy Diva has been strong, but people were running Zenyatta so much that they kind of forgot, I think. Um, but I think on some points of maps, you'd rather have Mercy than Zenyatta now, and I think that that's good. So then there's like this Genji nerf train. I don't mind the Genji nerf train because I don't find Genji to be underpowered right now. I think he's just worse. Like, Genji has always been this weird hero because they gave all of the cool spells and like abilities to Genji, but they like didn't give a lot of movement options to a lot of heroes in the game. So his kit on paper is still way too good. Um, I mean, the hero has a double jump. He has a wall climb, he's got the long range shurikens, he's got the short range shurikens, he's got the dragon blade, like he can still do it all, you know? It's just he doesn't burst damage as high anymore. He's now more of a cleanup hero, and I like I think that that's fine. Um Double Jump no longer resets from wall climbing. I guess that they never really intended for this to happen, but some maps it's just too good to be able to like climb over walls. Like Ilios with Genji is really good. That new map. The German map is going to be very good for Genji. He's just overpowered in some maps. And I think that that's kind of good in its own form. Like, I want, I think that there should be maps that certain teams are better at because they have a Genji player that can abuse the map well. Um, he's just significantly worse against heroes like Tracer, because Tracer used to be able, like, if you were playing Tracer against Genji and you got down to like 110 health, Genji would like, left click melee dash combo you and you would die like instantly so now i think instead of like 110 damage burst he does like 80 it's like something like that but it's a big nerf to his burst damage but it's not really a nerf to his overall damage it, it is but it's not like it's not the end of the world this hero is still fine discord got nerfed this hero will still be picked it just won't be insta pick or dragon blade won't destroy your pubs anymore because it's only six seconds the change to the Junkrat Steel Trap and Venomon is not really that big of a deal. It just makes Junkrat a little bit better against him because now a Junkrat can reliably stand on his trap if a Genji is going to fight him. Like he's like, oh, there's a Genji there. I can just like put a trap down and walk away. It just makes Junkrat a little bit safer. But the melee nerf is definitely a big deal as far as his burst. But the hero can still clean up probably better than any hero in the game. Um. But this is a big deal too. Like, I used to feel like his ult, his dragon blade was way too long, like just the duration of it. It's like you would Genji would ult and you'd like pin him on the ground or something, or like earth shatter him, and he'd like get up and still be dragon blading. And you're just like, what is going on? And he'd still get two more kills. So I think he definitely needed a nerf to his ult. And I don't mind that he got these other two nerfs, but I'm not really a Genji player, so I don't have any sympathy. Because I always felt like the Genji players were kind of gimmicky. Like, there's a difference between winning your pub games playing a hero like McCree or Tracer or Zarya, and then playing your pub games as Genji. Because, like, if you're playing offense, if you get lucky with a Dragon Blade, or, like, you'll get Dragon Blades a lot, right? Like, you could probably pop five Dragon Blades in one game of King's Row. And if you wound up just getting one lucky one, or you had, like, a drop the beat with you or a Zarya ult, you had eight seconds to get, like, kills with this massive damage. And if your team's running Ana, and then you get Ana ulted, you could just team wipe people by yourself, and you didn't really have to worry about your teammate doing anything. Your teammate's doing anything at all. So, like, while I agree that his hero, like, the hero's a good hero, it's like, should you really be able to 1v6 players just because someone else hit Q? I don't think so. Um, like, if you want to Dragon Blade a black hole, you can still do that. That didn't get touched. But the ability to like get Lucio ulted and then go for like a 6k just got nerfed. And like that's fine. Whatever. Um, I think people that were good at Genji will still be good at Genji. I don't think Genji is going to die. Um, whatever. Lucio, amp it up. The boosting of movement speed has been decreased by 30% from 100 to 70. Thanks to Lucio's speed increase, he was almost a must pick in every lineup. I don't understand why they think that this would make him less of a must pick. Like, movement speed in an FPS game is huge. There's, like, this concept of aiming, right, in FPS games. If someone's moving faster than you, 
they're going to have the advantage just in raw aim. Like if you have to move your mouse more and they have to move their mouse less, or they have to be less precise because you're moving slower, they're going to get the advantage. So 70% increase in move speed is still ginormous. I think teams will start running Lucio. You'll still run Lucio all the time. The only exception I think will be defense on like the first point of a map or the last point of a map. There's like some parts of certain maps where you don't really need speed boost at all. Um, but there's also comps, I think. I think people don't realize how big of a deal it is to like pay attention to the damage sources when they say things like, oh, Lucio is not gonna get picked anymore. Like think if your team got hit with like a Junkrat Roller or a Pharah Rocket and like two or three people ate spam or even from like a Zarya right click. If your whole team needs a fat Zarya right click, Lucio is still the best healer to heal your whole team fast and like efficiently, right? I guess Ana you could say, but it's still cooldown based. Like you can't heal through. It's not as quick and it's not as efficient. Also, drop the beat is just a really really strong ability, and teams running it against teams not running it are gonna run into issues. Um. I think Lucio is still a must pick. I think if you really wanted to make him not a must pick, you would just up the movement speed of everybody and make his um, heal a little bit less. So he would be like the movement speed hero, not the movement speed and heal hero. Um, like I would give him his damage back and make him the or the speed aura. Or I had this I had this like crazy idea and I don't even know if it's legit. But I would give, I would replace his speed boost. I would make everyone in the game faster, like 50% faster or something. And then make his E like a jump boost or something. Like something different. Like speed is always going to be too good to not run. Um, you, this could be 50% and he would still get picked. It's just now he's a little bit less strong. Like if a team's retreating, you're not going to be able to hunt them down as efficiently. But if you're taking a fight on paper, the team with the better move speed will do better. Um, Orb of Discord. The amount of damage amplified by a target with Orb of Discord has been decreased from 50 to 30. This is just the, they just reverted the change that they made. Jumping would be a big deal on some maps actually, but I don't really want to talk about it. I just think that they should remove the speed boost if they want him to not be a must pick. Uh, Orb of Discord. They just yeah they re they reverted this change. I don't hate this. This is like I think Zenyatta was too strong in the current patch. Like they gave him an extra fifty HP. Like that's huge, right? But you want them all to be situational. But um, I think that the fifty HP was too big in general. Like I would have nerfed that. I would, I probably would have nerfed. I would have probably given him thirty and then taken twenty five of his health away. But um, this just, the, they upped the damage on his body shots to like coincide with this change. So like he used to do 40 plus 50, which was 60 damage total. Now he does 59.8 with the 46.30. So it's like fine. Um, he does the same amount of damage output on a discorded target as he did before. He does more damage on non-discorded targets than he did before. And his teammates do less damage to Discord targets. People think that Roadhog's gonna come back now, but I never felt that Roadhog was like Zenyatta definitely ruined Roadhog and Diva, but I feel like it wasn't as like that you can still kill a Roadhog and a Diva without a Zenyatta. Zenyatta's strong mostly because of the ult now. It's just way too efficient. Like you're never gonna not pop it. I think Zenyatta is not going anywhere. I think that this is just a well-deserved nerf. Um, because she didn't, he didn't need to be as good as he was. Um, Roadhog left for a little while. Like, it depended on the map, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying like a huge speed buff, but anything that makes Lucio good, I think. L Lucio is just too good because of it. Um, but I think that this is fine. Zenyatta is still strong. He's still stronger than he was before the last patch. Um, I don't see him going anywhere. Watchpoint Gibraltar's first checkpoint is removed. I don't know why it was there to begin with. It was kind of silly. Um, it was just there. Like, 
it didn't do anything it just gave you more time and it made capping the second point give you like six minutes or something to cap the second point but it was like the equivalent of a first point on any other map so by them removing this it means that now you only have like four minutes or something to cap the first point so that just makes that point a little bit less of a giveaway it was very hard to not take the first point because you had so much time or the second point rather because you had so much time. a new allied health bar option has been added this should have been in the game from day one <laughs> um i'm glad that they added it though Contextual menus have been added to the hero selection game player's ability to report or group up with other players. They put report right next to remove friend. I almost found out the hard way today on Mabel, so they might want to change that. But um, that's cool. Actually, you guys now purple and competitive play queue. There was a post on Reddit saying, I read it today, it was like, um, you should know. They want, you to, they want the game to tell you when you're queuing for quick play versus when you're queuing for comp. And this is the change right here that they already did that. If the Q thing is purple, it means you're queuing comp. And if it's the normal, I think it's like yellow, it means that you're queuing for quick play. So that's that. Made several minor adjustments to the typography in Spectre UI. I think that that's just the font colors. Um, the red was really hard to watch on Twitch. I think that they're making it easier to watch on Twitch. Fix the bug. Go participation, fix the bug, custom game settings, uh, fix the bug that caused heroes to die when first spawn, the custom useless, um, whatever. Even no longer communicates her ultimate session to the start while charging, calling her mech ultimate. Are any of these big deals? Because I don't think so. Fix the bug, oh, no. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything here that's useful. But yeah, none of these are big changes to heroes. Um, I kind of want to get like a hero list because I just want to see what I'm missing. So I guess like I'll go through each hero and say like how their patch affected them. Genji is definitely just worse. He's still good, but he's just worse. He won't be insta-pick anymore. I don't think he was really insta-pick. I think some teams are running him kind of Annoyingly, like teams were stubborn in this patch, and I was like, when I was doing my bot analysis, I found that there were teams that like wouldn't switch off Genji, and like Genji's good, but you can deal with Genji. Like Zarya deals with Genji, Zenyatta deals with Genji, Winston deals with Genji, Tracer to an extent can deal with Genji, Reinhardt deals with Genji, and these heroes aren't that hard to run. Um, McCree's always gonna be good. Flashbang's never gonna be bad, so people will always run McCree. If people start playing Mercy more, you'll see Pharah return. Pharah kind of shakes things up because when Pharah was good in the last patch, teams weren't running D.Va because D.Va didn't have the new defense matrix. So even if Mercy got good, people are saying like, oh, Pharah's going to be great. But McCree is still viable. McCree's always viable. Zenyatta is more viable than he was when Pharah was good. And so is D.Va. And these two heroes are very good against Farah, the Zenyatta and the Diva, just because of the fact that like the rockets are so easy to predict and you can just completely shut down a barrage. So like a, a defensive team running like a Zenyatta and a Diva against a Farah with like a McCree, like Zenyatta McCree will do a massive amount of damage to a Farah. Reaper's still probably one of the most powerful heroes in the game. I don't see him going anywhere. Soldier 76 is probably still dead. Um, he's hard to run, I think, is his biggest problem. There's not many times where you want him because his range damage isn't that good and his close range damage is awful. Um, I think McCree does more damage than him at range right now and Zenyatta kind of also does about as much damage as a Soldier 76 could. And it's all because they made Soldier 76's aim a lot worse. Tracer... I think has always been good. I think that this nerf buff thing to Zenyatta makes... If Mercy comes back, Tracer comes back, I think, because Tracer's probably one of the best heroes to deal with Mercy and Zenyatta. Um, they upped Mercy's heal per second, but Mercy still takes damage at the same rate. The thing that really messes up Tracer, though, is damage boost. So, like, when teams are running Mercy McCree, it makes it really hard for Tracer to do anything. So, like, you have, kind of have to play really flanky. And I don't think a lot of teams have players that understand how to, like, play from the back. Um, Tracer's really good, but 
Mercy damage boosting and McCree like insta gives them and stuff. Bastion's still Bastion. Bastion only comes into play when there's like a tank meta. If teams are running like Roadhog Winston on offense, or Roadhog Winston Reinhardt or something, like some crazy combination of like Zarya Roadhog Reinhardt, which isn't actually that crazy of a composition, that's when Bastion comes in. Teams haven't run him much on defense, but Reinhardt, Zarya, Roadhog is not that crazy of an offensive comp, so like that's when you go Bastion. He's still niche. Hanzo, they buffed him, but I think he's still niche. Junkrat, he'll probably never come back into the meta. Um, Diva's too good at blocking rollers now. And he just feeds Zarya charge. So, like, you see Junkrat's on defense, you just run Zarya, and you generally win the lineup, win the matchup. Because the Zarya does more damage than the Junkrat rollers once she gets her charge up. May will definitely come into play more often than he was, or than she was. Only because defending is always going to be good, and the Blizzard AoE is huge, so you can, like, really stall out a point now. Um, easily. Torbjorn's in like the same category as May in that they're both defensive only heroes. Like you don't you're never gonna really want to run either of them on offense. But they're good on the last point of some maps. Torbjorn's a little bit harder to run in matches, but Torbjorn's really good to run in pubs. So like if you're trying to win like your competitive matches, like your um ranked matches in the pubs, Torbjorn and May are pretty safe bets, but competitively I don't think either of them will flourish or be like insta picks or something. Widowmaker won't see playtime. Um, Widowmaker won't see playtime. Diva. Diva will still be Diva. They nerfed Diva's Matrix. I think the Matrix was too good. Diva's still strong though. Damage block is huge in this game. Reinhardt v Reinhardt shield battles are like pretty much one of the most deciding things in the game. And the ability to like eat a flashbang or just block an entire Roadhog clip on your Reinhardt is huge. Um, she gets boned by May pretty hard, and I don't think teams have been noticing that, but she also gets boned by Zarya pretty hard. So like, if you're running Zarya, you'll probably win the matchup with a team that has them, or a D.Va. Reinhardt's still insta-pick. Roadhog is definitely a winner in this patch. Because Hanzo doesn't really bust him that well. McCree does massive damage to him, but without Discord, it'll be a little bit worse. I think Roadhog will come back for sure, which means Reaper will come back. Um, whatever. Winston. I don't know what you do with Winston, to be honest, right now. Like, I don't know if you have to do anything with Winston. Diva poops on him. McCree still does really well against him. Roadhog does well against him. Zarya does well. He's just not in a good spot, but he's still a strong hero because he's good at delaying and he's good at defending, and his shield is actually really good, but I don't know. He won't be insta-pick ever, but he'll definitely still see time. It's just D.Va kind of outshines him in what he wants to do, which is like tank up, do damage, and like stay alive. Zarya's probably still the best hero in the game, in my opinion. There's not many... The reason why I think Zarya's so good, and this is like more of a competitive play kind of thing, or just a, in, a, in the game in general, is like, you have to live to win, you know? Like, on defense, if you die, it's really bad. Zarya makes defense a lot easier, because if your teammates fuck up, you can save them. Not many heroes give you that ability. Like, oh, my idiot Symmetra got hooked, bubble. Oh, my Roadhog got hooked, bubble. Oh, my McCree just got flashbanged, bubble. Like, you can save your teammates, and that's, like, a huge, huge thing. Um, and every time that you save a teammate, you get damage. So, like, she's good at range. She's good at close up. She's got the black hole. I think Zarya's probably the best pub stomping hero. Like, if you actually want to know how to climb ranks, just play Zarya. Anna will definitely get picked. The thing with Anna is that her ult is game winning, but it's only game winning if the other team isn't ready for it. But her E is a direct counter to like Mercy and to any heal in general. I think teams just haven't really figured out how to run her, 
teams are like trying to replace their flex hero with Anna. I think you're supposed to like replace your Zenyatta player. I think you run like Lucio Anna or like Lucio Mercy, but never, never any of them together. It's Lucio plus any of them, or Symmetra plus any of them. But it's never Anna Mercy, it's never Zenyatta Anna or Zenyatta Mercy. Like Speed Boost is still too good, unless you're on defense, and then Teleport is really good. So that's that. That's kind of my analysis. I don't really have anything else unless you guys have questions. Um, yeah, let me know. Thanks for the follows, everybody. Put this up on YouTube.